All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Mike Serra, I'm the Executive Director of the uh, New Jersey League of Municipalities. I wanna thank you for joining us uh, for today's Lunch and Learn, uh, which is an overview of the state's proposed fiscal year 2024 budget uh, that was presented by Governor Murphy on February 28th. Uh, the state fiscal year ends on June 30th, as you are aware. So this will be covering the period of July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2024. Uh, the governor, again, uh, delivered the address on, on February 28th, and uh, we have some league staff members who will be providing you some overviews. A few ground rules, if everyone could keep themselves muted during the presentation, uh, so we don't get any background noise or any private conversations, certainly don't want that. Uh, there is a chat box, and we have uh, Paul Penna and the league is monitoring that as well, and uh, you know, we can address some questions at the end to the best of our ability. Uh, there's still a lot unknown about the budget at this point, but uh, we certainly will we'll point you in the right direction. We'll also open it up at the end for Q&A if possible. The PowerPoint will be available uh, after, after the presentation as well. This recording and, and this uh, slide deck will also be available on the league's website. So uh, thank you again for joining us. The governor proposed a FY 2024 budget, as you can tell, of 53.1 billion, 5% uh, greater than last year's uh, budget. Uh, it includes a surplus of 10 billion or, uh, dollars as well. Uh, there are obviously a number of issues and uh, items that, that we are keeping an, an eye on in, in the budget as well, such as uh, municipal property tax relief funding and uh, changes that have been made to Comptra or being proposed to Comptra and to the energy tax receipts as well. Um, also addressed in the budget is the issue reg regarding uh, the increase on state health benefit contributions uh, with 200 million in the budget for next plan year. We'll get to all that shortly. Uh, so, so with that, um, I'm gonna pass the baton uh, to the league's deputy executive director and director of government affairs, uh, Lori Buckaloo, um, who will uh, speak to you for a few moments and then we'll, we'll pass it on to Andrew Lefevre on the league staff. So again, thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you find this be, uh, beneficial and uh, please get, get your questions in the box. Uh, thank you. Lori? Thank you, Mike. Um, as you can see on the next slide, uh, we're going to discuss municipal aid. 48% of the budget is for direct and indirect property tax relief. There's nearly 1.6 billion in municipal aid. Uh, you can see the chart there of the breakdown. School aid has increased by 5.6%. Other aid has increased by 4.9%. And uh, municipal aid decreased by 4.2%. Uh, we are uncertain exactly what other local aid is other than the descriptor. I'm sorry, other local aid decreased by 4.2%. And the descriptor for that were one time uh, allocations in the fiscal year 23 budget. Mike, if you could go to the next slide, please. Energy tax receipts. Uh, this is going to get a little nuanced. The 75 million in the municipal relief funds that we received in fiscal year 2023 are not included in this year's budget. Uh, energy tax receipts line item has increased by 9.09 million but that is due to inflation. If you recall with energy tax receipts, there's a point uh, it's, we refer to as a poison pill provision that if the state doesn't distribute certain amount of funds to the municipalities, they can no longer collect the tax. Well, due to inflation, the poison pill would have been hit. So it had to be in, energy tax receipts had to be increased by 9.09 million. Uh, what the state is also doing this year is consolidate municipal property tax relief act, which we call Comptra, is being uh, merged with energy tax receipts. So you no longer will have a line item for Comptra and a line item for energy tax receipts. You'll just it'll just be one under the name of energy tax receipts. Based on this blending, all municipalities should be receiving in fiscal year 24, a 0.7% increase in the energy tax receipts. Uh, overall in the budget, the energy tax receipts is 
398,000 is in the budget for energy tax receipts. Um, I will note that in the coming weeks, you'll be seeing a push from the league on um, reaching out to the legislators and the governor's office asking for full funding of energy tax receipts. Uh, this year, as Mike had mentioned, that the surplus for the budget is 10 billion. And if there was ever a time that towns could be made whole and the energy tax receipts uh, be at the funding level, it should be this is the year for, for us to see that. Um, so Mike, if you could go to the next slide. The next area we want to bring to your attention is municipal health benefits. So the budget this year includes, a, the proposed budget includes $20 million from the American Rescue Plan funds to be allocated as a one-time grant to municipalities to offset uh, significant increases in health benefit costs. The grant is proposed to be for both those municipalities in the state health benefits program, as well as those that are either in a health insurance fund or self-funded. But you would have had to experience a significant cost, but this is for plan year 2024. The budget right now doesn't address plan year 23 increases. Uh, this one-time grant would also be conditional. It would be conditional on, quote, sustainable and actuarially verified saving ideas that may include value-based and alternative payment models, medical bar, uh, pharmacy reforms, and a migration from legacy plans. Um, the budget does, in brief, doesn't go further into details on the health benefits uh, grant, which it, what it would look like. I would note also that at this week's State Health Benefits Commission meeting, they had a mid-year review by Aon. Aon's the actuary for the health benefits plan. And based on their projections and expectations in plain year 2024, they are saying we are likely to see a 6 to 8% increase in medical costs and a 7 to 8% increase in pharmacy costs. So in the world of municipal health benefits, that's what we know right now, but the budget does propose a $20 million one-time grant for 2024 cost. Mike, if you want to go to the next slide. Pension contribution. The budget this year includes a 7.09 billion allocation uh, for a pension, pension payment that 7.09 billion includes monies from the state lottery funds. This contribution is based on the actuarially determined contribution, and it will mark the third consecutive year that the pension fund payment will meet or exceed the actuarially determined contribution amount. On the next slide, we're gonna discuss affordable housing. Uh, the budget maintains the dedicated revenue in the Affordable Housing Trust. It calls for an additional $15 million for enhanced benefits for first-time, first-generation home buyers. It also includes an additional $100 million of American Rescue Plan funds for the Affordable Housing Protection Fund. Um, and the funding is for various programs aimed at providing affordable housing to New Jersey residents. Mike, the next slide, please. Uh, the budget also uh, includes appropriations for direct property tax payer relief fund programs such as anchor, uh, senior freeze, veteran property tax. So anchor will be fully funded. Again, uh, homeowners could see up to a $1,500 uh, refund and tenants could see up to 450 in the proposed budget. The senior freeze program, uh, the pro governor's proposing to increase the qualified threshold, income threshold to $150,000 and reduce the waiting period that a resident has to uh, become qualified for the senior freeze program from 10 years to three years. Next up on the next slide is transportation. The budget allocates $2 billion for the state transportation capital program. 
of which 1.24 billion would be designated for critical investments in state, local highway and bridge projects. The remaining 760 million would be allocated to New Jersey transit capital projects. The budget does continue support for the local aid and economic development grants. Next up is Main Street Development. Uh, the budget includes 50 million for the Main Street Recovery Program, which aims at supporting local businesses and includes 20 million for manufacturing incentives. The budget also includes urban investment funds, which uh, it creates an urban investment fund that would be funded again through the state fiscal recovery fund. This program would be designed to revitalize urban areas that have been negatively impacted by shifting patterns of work and commuting since the pandemic. You, you know, the urban centers that have seen a reduction of foot traffic uh, because of remote work. The flexible grant funding would be responsive to the city's needs, and it could include investments in arts and culture, beautification projects, public safety, streetscape improvements, pedestrian improvements, open spaces, and a reimagination of the underutilized office spaces. Uh, we want to touch briefly on the next side on the Cannabis Regulatory Commission. Um, so far in fiscal year 23, uh, between recreational, recreational and medical cannabis has generated $43 million in revenue with taxes. And for fiscal year 2024, the budget projects over 77 million in revenue. Uh, the Department of Labor has launched a retail cannabis worker trainer apprenticeship program with Rowan University to prepare workers for jobs in the emerging cannabis industry. And the New Jersey Cannabis Regulatory Commission has partnered with the New Jersey Business Action Center and the Economic Development Authority to create two new state programs to support cannabis businesses with business development support and capital system funds for licensed applications. At this point, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Andrew Lefebvre, who's going to start with energy investment. Thanks, Lori. Um, so for energy investment, um, the proposed budget includes an investment in clean energy and environmental initiatives. Um, for one, the clean energy program will be receiving 274 million to support programming. That's an increase of 12 million from the uh, last year's budget. Um, the pr proposed budget also includes 40 million to seed a new Green Fund at the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, EDA, which would attract up to 200 million in private capital um, to advance projects um, in, the, in the state's environmental goal of reaching 100% clean energy by 2035, which the governor had just announced. Um, the state also is increasing its goal of offshore wind power generating um, power from generating 200 and sorry, 7,500 7, megawatts to 11,000 megawatts by 2040. Uh, the Board of Public Utilities is looking to study the feasibility of increasing that target even further. Um, the state has created two, uh, two incentive programs for residential um, large scale, scale solar programs. Um, the first one is the administr Administratively Determined Initiative Program and the Competitive Solar Program. Um, the BPU is looking to release a proposal for the implement of these um, to really try and get the ball rolling on them. Uh, and, you know, one of the hottest topics in the energy industry, especially here in New Jersey, is the electric vehicle adoption. Um, it has continued to increase over the uh, past year. Uh, BPU has approved over $250 million in utility programs and incentives. Um, the Make Ready program for over 100, for, which will um, include uh, the development of 1,500 fast chargers and over 6,000 level two chargers for over the next four years. Um, if you want to move to the next slide, we'll be talking about the environmental protection um, allocations that the budget's increasing. Um, nearly 1.2 billion allocated, um, or the budget will include nearly 1.2 billion allocated funds for clean water, uh, for clean and sorry, clean water and drinking water projects, uh, surpassing the previous record of 726 million in fiscal year 2021. 
There's going to be eight million in additional appropriations for uh, shore protections, flood risk mitigation projects, and which will provide matching funds for the U.S. Army Corps for engineering projects um, to replenish beaches. Um, there's also funding for an additional 18 de Department of Environmental Pro sorry, also funding for an additional um, Department of Environmental Protection programs. Um, sorry, we'll add 18 new members to the staff to improve and, and maintain urban state parks. 500,000 for bear, sorry, bear proof trash uh, recyclings um, to reduce bear and human interactions. And lastly, 160,000 um, for deer management grants to help uh, localities develop management plans and administer deer hunting and um, proceeding activities. Um, next, we're going to be talking about the American Rescue Plan Firefighter Grant Program. Um, this program adds an additional uh, $10 million uh, to the American Rescue Plan Firefighters Grant Program, which has already provided funds for um, yeah, a couple hundred uh, different fire departments to ensure firefighters have the proper um, protective cleaning and sanitization equipment. Um, for, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, there is also the creation of the Boardwalk Fund, um, which we'll be exploring in the next slide. Um, the creation of the Boardwalk Fund uh, is aimed to assist with repairs and uh, re renovate the seaside attractions. Uh, the budget proposal allocates $100,000 from the American Rescue Plan funds for this program, combining with state fiscal recovery funds, budget allocations, along with local contributions and private capital. Um, the funds will be used to make critical improvements needed to enhance the climate resiliency along the shore. Um, so we're very excited to hear that about for our shore communities. Um, up next, we'll be talking about public safety. Uh, the, the budget proposal provides for 8 million in additional funds for statewide expansion of alternative responses to reduce incentives of violence and escalation, AKA the Arrive Together program. Um, it continues 10 million to support community-based violence incentive programs uh, and includes funding for staff for new units and expanding existing units with a focus on reducing gun violence uh, reductions in auto theft, um, you know, exploitation, exploitation such as human traffic and labor cases. Um, next, we'll be talking about uh, mental health. Um, the budget include or the budget proposal includes 43 million for the New Jersey Student Support Services or NJ4S network. Uh, the new model for delivering mental health services for use will create 15 regional hubs to support the delivery of uh, preventative services in schools, as well as other locations, including libraries, community centers, faith-based organizations, and community success centers. Um, there's also some talk about the uh, food assistance within the proposed budget. Um, Mike, if you wanna go to the next slide. Uh, the proposed budget includes 85 million in support for food banks and emergency feeding organizations. It will also expand access to free school meals under the Working Class Families Anti-Hunger Act for children and families making under 200% of the federal poverty level with more than $20 million in new funding for that program. Um, for our military and veterans, the proposed budget will expand veteran services. Um, sorry, the proposed budget will expand veteran services offices from the existing 14 offices to an office in every county. In addition, the budget includes funding to begin the process of converting double occupancy rooms at veteran homes to single occupancy. Um, up next, we have federal funding. So um, this is really Paul's topic. So I appreciate him giving us some valuable insight. Um, for the federal funding, uh, the American Rescue Plan um, recovery funds provided 6.2 billion in New Jersey in 2021, and the governor has allocated approximately 4.8 billion of that money towards various purposes such as public health, economic stabilization, water infrastructure, child care, and pre-K investments, uh, eviction prevention, and affordable housing. Um, the the plan is to work with the legislature, or the governor plans to work with the legislature to allocate it. Um, all um, uncommitted funds this year uh, in this year's Appropriations Act um, to get it to where it needs to be. And, you know, the last topic I'll be touching upon 
um, before I hand it over back to Mike, is K through 12 education. Um, the budget proposes, uh, or the budget proposal allocates $20.5 billion, including $861.1 million from the Lottery Enterprise Contribution Act to pre-K to or pre-K through uh, 12th grade education. Um, this amount includes direct payments for pension and health benefits. Uh, pay and payments for uh, you know our educators. Um, the budget proposal also proposes 832 million um, over the 2023 budget um, in aid. This amount includes uh, reallocations from overfunded um, from you know, sorry, <laughs> my apologies. Um, this includes 832 million over the 2023 proposed in aid, which. Uh, which will reallocate from overfunded to underfunded areas. Um, and lastly, the, um, there is 109 million in new spending for pre-K, which fully funds programs started in 2023 and includes 40 million to expand programs to new districts or support other, exp or other exp expenses needed, um, like workforce development. Um, the Department of Education is continuing to kind of work with stakeholders to kind of come up with a strategic plan for uh, preschool expansion and, and they develop it into its second phase. And with that, Mike, I'll turn it over to you. I'm pretty sure that the um, budget hearing uh, agenda has been announced. Yes, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Lori. Uh, just, uh, I'm gonna take a step back before I, I go over this. So, so the, the process has begun. The governor gives his budget address. Um, we receive a budget and brief document, which kind of gives us an overview of, of, of major topics. Still a lot of questions. We're waiting for a number of, of significant budget documents to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Uh, so this is an ongoing process. And uh, you know, we, you know, we, we are speaking to you today here on, I believe, you know, March, uh, March 10th. Um, so by March 17th, by St. Patrick's Day, there could be some changes and updates and, and, and additional information. But we're, we're kind of on a countdown because uh, there is a deadline for a signed balanced budget to be completed by midnight, June 30th. And shortly, uh, the state legislature will be taking their budget break and hearings will begin. Uh, during that period of time is our best opportunity. And, he, and here's the commercial pitch. We, we talked about the municipal property tax relief funding. We talked about energy tax receipts. We talked about this shift in CONTRA where the, the funding formerly known as CONTRA is proposed to be shifted over to energy tax receipts for reasons we haven't really been told or, or explained to why. Uh, the funding for energy tax receipts, even though there is a modest inflationary adjustment to avoid the poison pill, uh, is still woefully inadequate for the funds that are collected and are supposed to be restored and returned to local governments for local government purposes. Please keep in mind that for years and years, the state budget has used these local funds for state budgeting purposes. At times there were state budget crises where they argued that it was necessary in order to, to, to provide services at the state level. With a $10 billion surplus, if there's no opportunity to restore this funding, then I don't know when there ever will be. Uh, we got a down payment last year from the state legislature of 75 million. Uh, we're pushing for more. Uh, for mayors on this, on this Zoom call, uh, or tell your mayors, there's gonna be a joint letter going out next week where I'm gonna ask folks to sign on, an open letter to the state legislature and the administration calling for full restoration of the energy tax receipts. It'll be posted online. You'll be getting your mayor or the mayors of the town will be receiving an email from me with the links to sign on to this. Uh, shortly thereafter, we're gonna be unveiling a dedicated website uh, for, for this exact purpose uh, to, to again, to finally and fully restore the funding for property tax relief purposes to the local governments as was contemplated by the statutes. So please keep an eye out for that. That's part of our process and that's what we're gonna be doing. Uh, the budget hearing dates, as you can tell, uh, some have been set. Uh, there will be a series of departmental hearings where each of the state departments, many of the state departments will go before the respective budget committees to present their budget and to, and to go through their line items. Uh, but the opportunity for the public to participate. The Senate Budget and Appropriations Committee is meeting on March 14th, next week, 10 a.m. at Ramapo up in Mawa. Uh, they are also providing an opportunity for the public for input on April 25th 
10 a.m., which will be done via Zoom. Likewise, the Assembly Budget Committee uh, is meeting in person twice uh, with the opportunity for the public to comment on uh, March 27th at 9.30 here in Trenton, and two days later, March 29th, 9.30 in Trenton. You can register on the state legislature's website. This is a hot link, so when you get this document, you should be able to follow the link to that. And maybe if, could someone also drop that link into the chat box, uh, which might be helpful as well. Um, so please, we're gonna, you know, your voices should be heard. Uh, take a look at the league's website. We have pages focused on, on the state budget, on energy tax receipts. Uh, you can submit, you don't have to, you don't have to present a verbal testimony. You can provide a statement in writing for the record with your requests. And, and, and hopefully your support for some of the initiatives we're talking about, but that's the opportunity to do so. And the ability to register or to submit comments is available on, on the website. So um, I'll be off my soapbox now, but obviously it's, a, it's a, an issue of critical importance to, to municipal governments. And now is a ripe opportunity to, to, to take the down payment that was made last year and build upon it going forward. Um, so with that, Paul, uh, you've been monitoring the chat box. I, I saw one, at least one question in there. Can you, uh, can you farm it out here? Thank you, Mike. Yes. The first question, uh, is the cannabis money that is referenced the state level only, or are they incorporating local receipts as well? Take that one. Thank you. I also want to point out too, as you can see, we were dealing with a lot of numbers and we did have a, a typo. The boardwalk fund is actually a hundred million, not a hundred thousand. Uh, apologies for that. Um, so the budget calls for a hundred, one hundred million dollars for the boardwalk fund, not not the hundred thousand. Um, in regards to cannabis, the number that I read of the 43 million in revenue this year and over 77 million next year is from the state revenue. Uh, if you recall, the statute had a formula in which 15% of all revenue collected had to be used for underage deterrence and prevention. And then the remaining of the remaining 85%, 70% had to, has to support impact zone investments up to 30% provided to support the Cannabis Regulatory Commission's administration. Um, the budget also says that the new revenues are going to be used to support a variety of investments to benefit those harmed by the war on drugs and support inclusive growth. Uh, their priority areas continue to include economic and community development, including local infrastructure, re-entry, and community-based violence intervention programs and services, including expanded summer opportunities and public health programming and lab capacity. And the revenues collected through the social equity excise fee will similarly be invested in economic development and community resources in the impact zones and the commission is going to make spending recommendations to the governor and legislature, and we'll see that during the departmental hearings. Okay, thank you, Lori. Uh, my camera seems to be playing some issues with me right now. So I, uh, I'm off camera, probably preferred by all of you, but uh, I, I'm still here. Uh, Paul, I, I don't know if there are any other questions with the box. If anybody uh, wants to, we, we can also open it up to the floor if anyone uh, wants to unmute themselves and, and uh, has a question or, or a comment, you know, please do so now. Thank you, Mike. Yep, the, the chat box is clear, so. And anyone from the floor? All right, not hearing any. Uh, We'll wrap this up. There's a co contact information for the league's uh, legislative team. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us. Um, I want to thank Lori and Andrew and Paul for, for their assistance in putting this together. Um, Andrew, I like the joke, might be the uh, one of the few people in the state who actually read, well, read the budget from line, you know, every line of the budget. So, uh, uh, you know, the league games to be a valuable resource to you through this process uh, of June 30th and beyond. 
so uh, this will be uh, made available to you afterwards, reviewing uh, with the slide deck as well. And if there are other, any other further questions, then I would suggest that we uh, dismiss ourselves and we start uh, an early weekend, everyone. So uh, thank you all. Have a great day.